In this video, we want to look a little bit more at case classes and files. So in previous uh, videos, we have read data from files, and we use case classes to organize that data. Uh, the example of a box score, while you know, a potentially interesting example, didn't really take advantage of the full power of the computer. Uh, one of the reasons why we do things on computers is because they have the ability to handle large amounts of data easily. For this example, we are going to look at a somewhat larger data file. Uh, this data file, which was pulled down from uh, the one of a uh, ORNL.gov uh, government repository of temperature data for the United States. I used the uh, web interface and I pulled down data for the city of San Antonio, uh, just temperature data. And I did it for, you'll see this starts with uh, 1946 and it goes all the way to 2010 and this is daily weather data. Going back up to the top, there's one line here that has a header. Uh, the second line tells us what the values are. This is the day of the month. This is the day of the year, uh, or the Julian day. This is the month. This is a, a state ID. In this particular file, they're all the same because the only state is Texas. Of uh, The year, the average temperature for that day, the high temperature for that day, and the low temperature for that day. And so we want to write code that uses a case class to organize this data and then loads it all in using a source and we can do some interesting things with it. So let's go ahead and create a, actually let's call this temps.scala and because we are going to be reading from a file We'll go ahead and import scala.io.source, and we can declare our case class. We'll call it temp data. So the case class needs to, sto to store these various uh, values. The day of the month, which is an int. The day of the year is an int, the month, lowercase, which is an int. Uh, we'll skip the state ID, we'll keep the year, which is an int. Uh, then going down to the next line, we will also keep the average temperature, which is an int. Uh, actually, we'll go ahead and store it as a double. While in this particular data set, they are always integers. Um, because we're going to be doing math on them in certain ways, uh, it'll be nice to have them stored as doubles. T max is a double, and T min is a double. Okay. As we did with the box score, it's nice to define a function. Uh, call it parse temps. And this takes a single line from the file in the form of a string, and it gives back a temp data. So we want to split, and as you can see here, these lines are have single col uh, commas as delimiters. So we can say p equals line dot split on a comma. And then we'll go through uh, dom, day of month, equals p sub zero dot to int, val day of year equals p sub one dot to int, month equals p sub two to int, year equals p sub 4 to int, because so 0, 1, 2, 3 is the value we are ignoring, 4 is the year, uh, the average 
is p of 5 converted to a double. The max is p of 6 converted to a double. And the min is p of 7 converted to a double. Okay, so that gives us all of the values that we wanted. And now we just have to put them inside of a temp data object. So we make a new temp data object, day of month, day of year, month, year, average, max, min. Okay. So that function will take a single line and give us back uh, a temperature data object. Now we want to open a source to read this file. Uh, this file, uh, it's worth using word count to look at just how long this file is. This file has a bit over 23,000 lines inside of it. Uh, so that there are no typos. We'll copy that and make our source. Make sure we close the source when we're done. Lines is source.get lines. Um, temp data is lines mapped onto parse temp and then we'll convert that to an array so that we have an array of our temperature data. Uh, so that's all we needed to read it in. Now what would we like to calculate from this? Well, you know, some simple things to calculate might be you know, the average average temperature for you know, averages for the uh, average high and low over this entire time period. Um, so we'll start with the average. Well, if we want to calculate that, one way to do so would be to take the temp data and map it across the function of underscore dot TAVE, which pulls out all of the average temperatures, sum those all up, and divide by temp data dot length. In addition to the average, we can also get a high and a low by doing the same thing with max and min. It's worth trying to run it at this point. Parse up temp. There's a an S on this one, not on the other. This is actually only parsing a single temperature, so or a sim, single day. So we'll make it singular. And this runs. And ah, there's an interesting problem. Uh, for input strings, source blah blah. blah. Oh, okay, so. We didn't skip the top line. In fact, we need to skip the top two lines. We can do that very simply by calling lines.next twice. Now so let's try that again. Oh, we have another exception. What could have caused this one? So we skipped the top two lines. This says that there was a number format exception for dot. Well, that's interesting. Where did that dot come from? Um, well, we could go look at the file again and search for, for various reasons, turns out we have to backslash our dot. And you see there's a data point that has dots on it. And then there's some more in 2008. So basically there's a few in 2006 and a few in 2008 uh, when pulling down this file, it reported that there are dots for 
uh, data points that uh, they didn't where places where they didn't have data so somehow we have to deal with that and since it turns out those are across all of the temperatures we can just throw those out so what we're going to do is we are going to filter only things where it does not contain the string of comma dot and now 23 oh I forgot to close off the filter now if we run this there we go the average average temperature in San Antonio is just a little under 70 the average high is a little under 80, and the average low is a little under 60. Um, now, what other questions could we ask? It's one thing to know what all of the averages are. What about if I wanted to know only the average, uh, but break it up by month? Yeah. So I want to know the average temperature for each month over this entire span. Uh, well we could write a little for loop that runs through the months which should range from 1 to 12 and we want to print out the averages we can actually use the line that we had from above for this but with one additional uh, caveat which is that we want this let's go ahead and uh, put in month here that we only want this for days that are in that particular month so once again we're limiting things so we will filter things so that underscore dot month is equal to month pretty that up a little bit instead of making the line so long run okay so there's clearly something um, going wrong here has anyone spotted it yes we are dividing by all of the data and so our numbers are about one twelfth of what they should be how about we make val month data equal to that. Now the reason for doing that is otherwise we would have to do that filter twice. Once before the map and then another time to find the length. By putting it in a variable we can get away with doing it only once and you see that the warmest month in San Antonio is August, uh, followed very closely by July, uh, and that the coldest month is January, uh, followed by December and February, which are, of course, the what we would expect from these uh, from this this type of data. How about there's one last thing to do here. How about we count how many days since 1946 uh, San Antonio has had a high of above 100. Highs above 100. And we'll say at or, or above. Uh, so triple digit days. This can be calculated. Well, we can use temp data and we will use the count higher order method we could do a filter and call for the length uh, but all we really want is the count so we want to count everything where t max is greater than or equal to a hundred and we can see that since 1946 there have been 676 days 
that have been above 100 in San Antonio. So hopefully this gave you uh, some ideas for things that you can do with Scala and how we can use it to process large amounts of information. You can certainly go to this website and download temperature data for your own city and play with it. Uh, you can also look at values like precipitation and whatnot. So there's a lot of data there and you can play with it and Scala is a tool that you can use for doing interesting things. Uh, kind of run some little uh, experiments, discover things about what the weather is like uh, where you've lived.